Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, actually down at Wakarusa, Indiana today, which, uh, despite how silly that name sounds, is a real place. Kind of like Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's a real place. Uh, by your popular request, the 252RBLE, yeah, you know me, surveyor. I've had more requests for this surveyor floor plan than any other one. Um, and I was really excited to get my hands on it. One, not only because I, I haven't done it before, but two, it's very similar to a floor plan I accidentally inspired Freedom Express to create. And they each do it their own little different way. And I gotta tell you, there are some really good uh, like content hit points on this thing. Like the fact that we have a 60 by 80 true queen bed, we have a taller ceiling. Anywhere you see fiberglass, you're going to find Asdell right below it, even on the front nose and the rear wall, which are areas that a lot of brands don't do that kind of stuff. The underbelly is enclosed and forced air heated. We're looking at one today with an optional tank heater package if you really want to extend your season a little bit further. These even have things like factory standard TPMS, which I can't even spell, but evidently stands for tire pressure monitoring system, so that you have a little more peace of mind going down the road. Um, and, and it's easy to look at little areas like they don't do these fancy raised panel over the top cabinets. They just do simple flat uh, panel inserts on the doors, but you know what? That means that it's lighter, it's less expensive, that leaves uh, more uh, availability for higher cargo carrying capacity, which this model has like over 2,000 pounds of cargo, and I swear, RVs keep having less and less cargo capacity every single year. So sometimes being a little simpler is kind of one of the best things an RV possibly could be. Sometimes simple just means less chance for things to go wrong. They have some of the, the coolest like behind the headboard uh, pockets for your phones and all that kind of stuff. I love the taller ceiling because I can actually stand in the shower. It's got a couple things though, like they only tend to use the little dollar store four inch fart fans, but those are easy little things for an owner to potentially upfit. But in the meantime, you're not paying a premium price tag for something that's lacking premium features. Pound for pound, Surveyors are really grown on me. Um, kind of like fungus? That doesn't sound good. No. Now, I'm sitting over in the slide out, looking toward the campsite of the RV currently to showcase a couple things. There's a little bit better campsite window coverage on this than you might originally think. And this RV actually has a little bit better kitchen than some other similar layouts that I've seen. Uh, they, they managed to extend the kitchen countertop a little bit, and I ain't telling you it's massive by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it's not terrible. And actually, even if the sink and the stove are both in play, you still have uh, some functional prep space. Now, despite this being under 30 feet, it doesn't feel really small for a couple reasons. One, it has a taller ceiling. It's six foot nine, and that, by the way, is a 15,000 BTU air conditioner, so you don't need to worry about, you know, upgrading that. The other thing is we're totally carpetless, and I love it. Uh, it is my nerd preferred thing when the uh, slide floor and the main floor uh, matchy match, which is a technical term. Now, this is um, my personal opinion, but I would swap out those pedestal legs for a set of free floating legs for a couple reasons. One, um, I'm a little bigger on the midsection than I need to be, and I kind of like to cheat the, uh, you know, when I go to a restaurant, I like to push the table at the, at the booth a little bit over toward my wife and kid. But the other thing, that could allow that table to float over to be like additional countertop space. Um, and if I wanted to, I could sit over here at the sofa straight across from the TV on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place and have myself a little hashtag Dinofa action right there. Um, but nothing says you have to do it. That's like a $40 change, by the way. That's a low budget thing that I could do in my garage with a screwdriver and I suck with tools. So keep that in mind. Now we looked at the theater seat. We're going to see that open in a little bit. Um, standard that does come with a hide a bed in the sofa position, but here's an interesting thing with surveyor. They're very good about standardizing things like seating sizes. So you're seeing a dinette there right now, which I don't dislike, but if you wanted to, you could make that a theater seat or a hide a bed if you wanted. And I'd be kind of curious, would you be interested in one of these with like a double sofa seating arrangement and no dinette? I've kind of asked that question on some similar models before. Um, and, and the more I think about it, the more I'm almost kind of uh, personally in the camp of maybe doing that here. Now they've got the, uh, you know, your, your TV is right here on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place. Even though they have a taller ceiling, I really respect that they didn't mount it all the way up against the ceiling. And notice how they just put that interesting little accent trim piece up at the ceiling level. So it doesn't look like such a blank wall. Now that TV doesn't pivot, 
but does it need to? I don't know that it really needs to. They were able to give us a massive pantry by not including something like an electric space heating, uh, quote unquote, fireplace. So, uh, you know, kind of keep that in mind. If you really needed it, you could always just kind of put a, a space heater uh, here and there through the RV. We are carpetless, we are ventless, we are easy cleaning and pet friendly, and to make it even easier cleaning, this is one of only four RV brands in its class that actually has a factory standard uh, central vac system. So that's what you're looking at on the top. That's the actual central vac unit. Down below is what I call the electric dustpan. You can literally flick that sucker up with your toes and it activates a little vacuum function. And you could just sweep everything right there. And since the RV is all on one easy level, it makes keeping this thing clean uh, awfully easy. Now that is a stainless farm sink. I'll get you over there to give you a look in just a second. Um, I, I like the big window over here on the campsite, you know, whether you're sitting down or in the kitchen or, or what the case may be. Uh, this is also potentially the single most um, important piece of equipment and hardware in the RV right there, the barley popinator. Now, with uh, taller ceilings, they were able to go to taller cabinets, which is always pretty great. And um, I've noticed they've been getting a little bit better about some of the fine details, even where you're not looking like last year. I looked at a couple of these, and I love this removable cutting board, but it was never finished on the back. Um, well, to be fair, they did go a little heavy on the finish right there. That could have been done a little bit cleaner, but at least they are trying to finish it on the back. So, you know what? Plus one, minus one, whatever. The thing I thought about, though, is it is potentially a decent side splash because apparently a lot of RV builders seem to buy their bacon and sausage from some magician who uh, makes their bacon and sausage so that the grease doesn't splatter sideways. I've, I've never found it. Anyway, I can't find that stuff. That is a, a 10 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. You can option and swaption an eight cubic foot gas electric two-way. And we're gonna talk about the solar things with this RV uh, in a minute here. Now behind that TV, that is a literal massive walk-in pantry. And I'll get you a look at that in just a minute. First of all, uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but the toilet, if the door is open, stares like right at the theater seat and it allows you to have like the most incredible staring contest. But um, maybe that's just one of my personal hobbies. Maybe that's not exactly for you. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, overall, I thought the space around the toilet was pretty good. If you are a person of larger stature, it might be a little bit tight around your elbows, but I thought the leg room was good. And if you do have the ability to lean side to side a little bit, I think you're going to be able to take care of yourself just fine. Uh, it, it's not a massive amount of counter space in this bathroom, but at least you do have a dedicated bathroom sink. So you're not washing your bathroom hands, uh, in the kitchen sink, you know, and once again, with that taller ceiling, you will enjoy a little bit more headroom in here, which as a person who's a little bit over six foot tall, I know I certainly enjoy. And as a rectangular shower, you uh, uh, you know have a little bit more elbow room when you turn sideways. Now, in case you're curious, I don't always showcase these, but they do have the uh, retractable, allegedly mildew-resistant shower doors right there. Um, I'd be kind of curious, folks who actually own an RV with that kind of shower door, what's, what's your take and uh, your uh, opinion on it? Now, this... Uh, medicine cabinet actually is an interesting little surprise. First of all, not only is it, 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 yeah, I can talk. Not only is it not just the mirror mirror on the wall, it also has handy little toothbrush holder and little things like that are super, super useful. Now I'm at a funky angle for it here, but I'm going to get you some X-ray Superman vision. Look at the storage in this bathroom. First of all, the right-hand side is just tons of linen space. The left side is an additional hanging closet. That is really, really handy. Very nice extra place. Uh, not to mention, um, as we back up here, you know, giving you a look in the fridge, but in that pantry, the shelves don't go the full depth of the pantry. So if you wanted a space to put like a Swiffer or something like that, a shark stick vacuum if you don't like the central vac for some reason. You've got the perfect place to be able to put that. And like I said, they did a good job giving this one, I think a little bit better kitchen than some of the other similar floor plans I've seen from some other brands. Um, granted, this doesn't have an outside camp, not a big outside camp kitchen, so maybe it's kind of a wash, I don't know. I guess that's up for you to decide. I'm just glad that we get to sell and represent both kinds of brands here. Again, hide a bed is standard. Today we're looking at theater seat. 
Uh, we're also looking at the standard dinette, though if you really wanted to, you could swap that out. And what do you think about their dinette storage system? Rather than the lift top, I would, like, I think a lot of people prefer drawers. I would at least take doors on the front of the dinette instead of that lift top system. Because I don't really know what the benefit of the lift top is. You still have to take all the cushions and everything off, but at least you get to see there is full storage down there. Something else that I think is actually a kind of cool little detail. Um, this little uh, extra stand over here, that's where you're going to have some household and USB outlets, which is really, really handy if you're spending a rainy day inside the RV watching TV, uh, playing on your phone, whatever the case may be. Um, working our way up front here, you may have noticed a pocket sliding privacy door for the bedroom. There is a full window in the door. It's shade prepped, doesn't include a shade, but kind of like the smaller bathroom vent fans that I mentioned. Um, the things that are really big, expensive, and hard to do from the factory, Surveyor tends to do those from the factory. And generally speaking, I think they do them pretty well. Like a 60 by 80 true queen, like putting, you know, a lot of good outlets where you really, really need them. Things that are low budget, preferential, and easy for an owner to do themselves, like an entry door thing or like a fan upgrade or something like that. Uh, those they don't do. They kind of, you know, so if you have one or two things that you would like to switch switcheroo on this, you definitely could, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, over here in the bedroom, across from the bed, we do have some uh, TV hookups there. And if we look directly above the bed, you'll see a vent up here. It doesn't have a, uh, a power vent fan, but with this being a, um, a constructed, not a laminated roof, basically hollow roof with like residential insulation, you could piggyback power off one of these lights and even put a fan up here if you're uh, so inclined. Now, the taller ceiling also means if you sit up in the bed because you hear some funky murder hobo noise at night, uh, well, you're, you know, not going to knock yourself back out and go back to sleep auto magically. And the way that they do their behind the closet uh, bedroom storage, I personally think is one of the best out there. Because you already saw some household and USB outlets, but if we look down inside there, you see another set of household outlets. And you saw the little hole there where you could, uh, you know, feed your power cables or something like that through. So, it, you know, whether it's CPAP friendly, you want a phone charger, you want a hidden little personal effects storage place like Jack Sparrow, you know, he, he never leaves without his effects. Um, you got a cool little spot to do that, plus double drawers on both sides of the bed, in addition to struts holding open all the overhead cabinets. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, you know, that, I, I think I mentioned it is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. To be fair, <laughs> it is a bit of a backbreaker death wafer, but the fact is it is an easy swap for standardized residential bed sizes, bed sheets, all those things. And the road mode access and function in this one with the slide closed is fantastic. So I'm still standing in the bedroom, technically. If I back up, you can kind of see that. You see the entry door over on the left. From that door, we can get to the bed. We can get to the kitchen. Uh, really, the only things you're not going to be able to do is really just enjoy the TV. But for a travel stop, I don't know necessarily how important that is. The fact is, this one is exceptionally uh, good at passing the Cracker Barrel test. Now, if we start talking towing, that is one of the areas where these things really stand out for me. Uh, it, not just looking at the dry weight, but even the, the gross vehicle, fully loaded maximum weight of this RV, I think very nicely qualifies for the general description of half-ton towable. There might even be some bigger class SUVs that could find this one uh, nicely within their capacities here. Now, uh, what's kind of cool here, other than the windshield, which is different from a window, it's actually a bonded glass, kind of like you'd have, you know, in your vehicle. Any of the windows that you see, the, um, uh, like on a slide side or the side of the RV, they are going to open for airflow, with the exception of that one big atrium window in the slide. Um, sometimes when you hear aluminum structure, you look under the bed and you don't see an aluminum structure. An aluminum skeleton RV and aluminum skeleton furniture, kind of two different little things there. But uh, it does potentially save a little bit of weight uh, on the nose of this thing, which can help with hitch weights to make things a little easier. Um, I really like how surveyors really intelligent about lining up a lot of things too. Like you'll see some surveyors have one propane tank or two, and it matches up with the axles. Two axles, two propane tanks. They all have... Uh, the power tongue jack, so you don't got to get tennis elbow cranking this stupid thing the whole time. 
easy reach battery disconnect so your batteries aren't getting munched by the stuff if you accidentally leave your lights on. And that little yellow thing with the red blinker right there, well, that is the TPMS relay uh, because this comes factory standard with tire pressure monitoring. Now, I've got a little bit of a question for you there. It's cool that they're using TPMS. Currently, these are on an import tire. It wouldn't offend me if they went to something like a Goodyear but it would cost a few extra bucks. So I guess my question to you is the people who might actually want to buy one of these potentially, um, would, are you okay with the tire package with TPMS they have, or would you like them to upgrade the tires to Goodyear, understanding there's gonna be a couple bucks associated with that? Uh, leave me some feedback, we can get that to the factory, let us know. Now on the other side of the RV was a small baggage door. That's because there's, I think, like the water heater or something over there. Uh, the, the fact is though, the general storage under this thing is huge. And I do like the motion light over here. Um, it is only a motion light on this side. This will tend to be the side you get in and out of more often. So that kind of doesn't offend me and sort of makes sense. Um, don't know if you noticed, but there was one of those little uh, hex nut adapters for your uh, stabilizer jacks. Uh, hooked up to the front wall of this. And that is what I kind of tongue in cheek call the cordless jack system. Because if you slap that sucker on a cordless jack, you can NASCAR pick crew everything however you want. And I'd be kind of curious, who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Because mine, it's a toss up between Ricky Bobby and Cole Trickle. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm not much of a uh, sporter, even a motor sporter, but uh, I don't have any issue with anyone that is. I respect it. Um, by the way, uh, this is an anti-slam entry door. So if uh, the wind wants to grab a hold of that thing, it's not just gonna kablam shut or anything like that. Um, we looked at the underbelly. It's always going to be forced air heated. It's always going to be enclosed. Uh, they do offer an optional 12 volt tank heater package and kind of like the tires, I'm sort of, I don't know, it just kind of feels like I, I, I don't, I'm never going to be upset if an RV has tank heaters. I, I might be unpleasantly surprised if it doesn't. I, uh, that's another thing, it might cost a couple bucks. I'd almost like to see them standardize it, because I gotta, I bet if you ask most people, most people would want the tank heaters anyway, but I'd be kind of open to your input on that. Now there's a lot of brands that do a mini camp kitchen like this, where they'll have like a pull out two burner stovetop directly below uh, dad's medicine cabinet back here for the bottled water and the barley pop. The trick is if you're cooking on that two burner stove, you're gonna singe your arm hairs uh, trying to get in there. So they make the stovetop, or in this case, a removable griddle slide to the side with a propane cooker hooker below. Now that creates space for some kind of sink. Admittedly, it is just a basic dog dish sink, but it's, it, it's literally better than, than nothing, you know? Kind of like um, almost the same sort of conversation if we get up there and we look at the roof. First of all, you see that they are giving us a ladder up to that fully walkable roof. You've got trusses every 16 inches on center, and you're going to see a basic battery tending solar package. It's 80 watts and it has a very simple uh, charge controller on the inside that was blinking at us because the RV doesn't have a battery hooked up to it. The charge controller didn't like that, in case you were wondering. Um, again, crowdsourcing some feedback here. Personally, I think that, especially if you're going to have a standard 12 volt fridge, at least 200 watts of factory solar, like a 30 amp controller, feels a little more right to me. But once again, if you could leave us some notes for the factory, what is your input on that? Or would you rather it be the same? Because all the things that I would like to add to this RV, they're all gonna add a little bit of money. And nobody likes to add money to the RV. They all like extra features for no money. But unfortunately, that's just not how the world works. So once again, today's video by your popular request. I've tried to give you all the, I think, the ups and the downs and the in-betweens that I've seen it through my nerdy little lens. And I'd love to hear from you folks. Uh, if you appreciate how, uh, you know, we, we made the arrangements and took the time to get this done for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like our video if you're a regular return member of the RV Nerd Herd. And tell me a couple things like, where did they nail it? Where did they fail? All those little questions, you know, about the tires and the tank here, all those different things that I threw at you through the video. If you haven't, please take a second to drop us some notes. And who knows what they might do next year because uh, I, I kind of get the sense that they really are looking to crowdsource some feedback to make themselves even better next year. Uh, until then, though, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.